We're going to work with manipulating our pivot table data and I'm starting here on our data sheet to show you the kind of data that we have. We have almost 1,000 rows and five columns here of uh, the different types of fish we sell. Each of our stores, their sales figures listed by quarter and how many of each individual fish we've sold. Let's go here. I've already begun the creation of our pivot table. And if you want to learn more about pivot table creation, check out our video on that. We're going to start with our sales because that's probably the most likely thing that we want to sum up. I'm going to put my saltwater fish here. I'm going to put my stores in the column labels and I will put quarters in the report filter. And that's a pretty good pivot table right there. We still have one more field that we haven't used and that is the number sold. Now remember you don't need to use all of the fields you have available to us but we want to. We'd like to get a read on how many of each of these varieties of fish we sold in each store. So let's drag that down because that's something that we want to sum. And notice when we did that, first of all, take a look down here, sum of numbers sold, that's exactly what we wanted, and it put it here in the column labels. And that's what happened here. See that? It gave us new columns. I can scroll out here. As to how many of each individual fish here we sold for each store. Now, personally, I don't like the way this looks. This is a little bit confusing. It's not clear to me that this column belongs to, or I should say relates to this column. It, I kind of want to pair these together. It's a little bit confusing. And that's my own personal feeling on this. And that's the great thing about pivot tables is there's not really a right or wrong way of laying them out or even creating them. You want to go ahead and maneuver and manipulate your data so that you get what you want and it's easier for you to work with. Now, I don't like this in the columns. What I think I'm going to do is try and drag this over here to the rows. And see, that's a little bit better because now it's giving me the totals for each of the stores and each of the fish. So I see this Almaco Jack, I sold one of those from store 60626 right here. And I can go through that way. And that's a little bit better. It's still kind of confusing to me. So let me show you a little trick. I'm going to go ahead and drag this back here. Now look what happens. In fact, you know what? Let's remove this field and let's add numbers sold back to the values and see what happens. It put it back here in the column labels like we saw before, but it gave us another field here that says values. That's the same as this, the sum. It just automatically put it in the columns. Now, when we move this over here, it was okay. It wasn't great. But watch what happens if I take my values, the sum here, and drag it to my rows. Now look at that. Because this sum of, and then remember that little sign there, that sigma, sum of these values, sum of numbers sold, is putting the sum there instead of what we saw before which was just the individual numbers sold. See how that happened? By putting it here in the sum field, it allowed me to go ahead and just add the sums to my rows. Now I like that a lot better. That's a lot cleaner and I can look very easily sum of numbers sold, sum of sales. I can even go ahead and say, well, I'd like the sum of the number listed first. Not a problem. I can go here and just drag that up. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little gray line. I'm going to pull that up there, just like that. I can also go ahead and when I select the drop down arrow, I have the options of moving that field up or down in the order. And that's some more information about how to manipulate those fields. Remember, gang, you got to make it so it works for you. And they're very, very flexible pivot tables. That's what's really cool about them. All right, thanks, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. For more great Microsoft Office tutorials, subscribe to TrainSignal's YouTube channel, TrainSignal Office. 
or you can visit www.trainsignal.com for more information regarding our complete Microsoft Office training library.